Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Colleen and I'm on a journey to lose 100 pounds. In today's video, I am making a spicy sausage and kale soup. It's Sunday and I went to a great friend's birthday party last night and I had an amazing, amazing, fun, fun time. Um, it was a planned day off. So I had planned this day, you know, I knew about this day about a month ago. And so I had planned to make sure that I took that day off of my healthy eating program. Part of my planning is also to plan for the day after to know that I would um, be able to get right back on track after that day to make sure that some of those, you know, eating some of those foods that I don't normally eat didn't continue in the long term. So um, one of the meals that I had planned to make was this spicy sausage and kale soup. Um, it is a Trader Joe's recipe, so I'll link that down below so that you can check it out if you decide that you want to make it. Um, but the reason that I chose this recipe is because I thought that it would be something like a really good, yummy, warm comfort food for fall while it's also still really healthy um, and something that I would enjoy on a Sunday while I'm hanging out with my boyfriend watching football on a Sunday night. Quickly, I just want to take some time to show you the ingredients that I'm using. Um, so the recipe calls for two containers of chicken broth, um, reduced sodium or low sodium three tablespoons of olive oil, garlic powder, oregano, salt, pepper, Tuscan kale, um, a cup of organic red quinoa, two cups of water, spicy Italian chicken sausage, and then you see over here onions, carrots, and celery. That's a mixture called, I believe it's called mirepoix, um, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, but they do sell it by the container at Trader Joe's. When I went to my store, they ran out of, of stock. So I decided to make my own using just celery, carrots, and a whole onion. Okay, so we're going to get started. Hopefully this angle works okay for you. Um, we're just going to heat our pan to a medium heat and put just one tablespoon of olive oil in there because we're going to cook the sausage first, the chicken, the spicy Italian chicken sausage first. So that's about a tablespoon. And I've taken the chicken sausage out of the package and I just sliced it halfway, like um, lengthwise, and then cut them into um, maybe about half inch thick pieces so that they come out as like little half moons. I realized that I forgot to put on an apron, so I put on this one. This one was actually my late grandmother's apron, my Nana. Um, she embroidered this, so you can see it's just beautiful. It's a really beautiful design, and I love wearing it because it just feels like she was such a great cook, so it almost feels like passing the torch, you know? <laughs> um, I'm not nearly as good of a cook as she was, but I, you know, I like to wear it because I feel like I'm honoring her in a way. But anyways, if you see things changing in the background, it's because I'm cleaning as I go. <laughs> it's my favorite method is like, you know, cook a little bit, then wash some dishes, then cook a little bit, then wash some dishes. It just makes things go by a lot faster. But anyways, um, the pan is now hot. You can always just tell by hovering your hand over it. Of course, for safety, don't touch or get too close, but this definitely feels like a hot pan. I actually might turn it down a little bit even. Um, but we're going to go ahead and add the sausage. It's going to simmer. Love that sound. <laughs> and I'm just going to make sure that the oil is evenly distributed in the pan. And then basically let it sit for five minutes. So you want it to cook kind of undisturbed for five minutes and then flip everything and then cook it for another three to five minutes. So I like to set my timer because I love this timer. If you're interested in it, I'll link it, um, but let me know. So I set it for just five minutes and then press start. Timer is going off. <laughs> 
So that means it's time to just flip the sausage. Just gonna make sure everything naturally. Yeah, so some of it's getting a little brown, which is what we want. So I'm just gonna make sure that we're, make, we're cooking the other side on all these sausages. So anything that looks a little rare, I'm gonna make sure that's, that side is down now. All right, so it's been maybe about four minutes since I flipped these sausages and they're starting to look a little brown. So let me just show you. I'm ready to remove this from the heat. The recipe says that you can just set it aside, but I'm actually going to transfer it to a plate with a paper towel on it because um, I can see that there's still a lot of grease in there and I just don't want to put that in the soup. So um, you know, the other pan is actually going to have quite a bit of oil in it, so I just want to remove some of this oil. Now, if you were a real chef, you might say that that would take away some of the flavor, but for me, it's worth it. Like, I'm gonna ramp up the spices so that I don't necessarily have to worry about losing any flavor. I just wanna get rid of some of that unhealthy oil that's been sitting in there. Okay, so I just turned off the stove, but I'm gonna take our stock pot and put it on this burner and then heat it up again because I figure it's already hot, so it'll take a little bit less time. And again, it's on medium, so it'll take a little bit less time to heat up. And we're just gonna take, um, so again, the recipe calls for two tablespoons, but I'm gonna try to go for like uh, an overflowing one. <laughs> there we go. Because that's, that's quite a bit of oil. And I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know if you can see actually into this pan, but I will give you close up so that you can see what's going on over here. So I'm gonna let that sit and just heat up. For so the pot is nice and hot. I can feel just by hovering up here. Um, and so I'm going to start with the mirepoix, putting that, woo, sizzle. Might actually be a little too hot, so I'm gonna turn it down. I just use my hands. Sorry. I mean, your hands are your best tool, so I don't feel bad about it. So they said the ratio on the mirepoix is two parts onion to one part celery and one part carrots. So if you need to make your own, that's the ratio. And supposedly it's a seasoning that was popularized in France, which I didn't know, but I learned that when I looked up how to make it. So, all right. So, let me just grab a spatula here. I'm just gonna mix that up a little bit and let me zoom in so you can see what's going on. Here's how it's looking. That's just the mirepoix in the oil. I hope I'm saying it correctly, otherwise <laughs> it's gonna be embarrassing, but all right. So I'm just gonna let that sit for a second and I'm gonna add the seasonings. The seasonings are basically garlic powder, oregano, salt, and pepper. The recipe calls for one teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm going to double up on the spice because I just feel like for a soup, that's just not a lot for me. <laughs> I like a lot of spice and a lot of flavor. So I'm just gonna double up on the garlic powder oop, and the oregano. So I'm gonna do two teaspoons of garlic powder. I mean, you could probably add regular garlic too. And then Similarly, the recipe calls for a half teaspoon of oregano, and that just doesn't sound like enough, so I'm gonna add one teaspoon. And with cooking, supposedly, like, you're not really supposed to measure, but I suppose I'm more of a baker by nature, so 
Um, it comes more naturally to me to measure. Hopefully one day I'll get to that point where I can be creative and be like, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but I'm just not there. Um, and then salt and pepper to taste. So I'm not gonna add that much salt because there is salt in the chicken broth and I have a weigh in tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday and I don't wanna be retaining um, sodium or retaining water weight. So just a little bit of sodium. But it's okay to have it. As long as you don't have a blood pressure issue, you can really, you can have sodium. You're actually supposed to have a little bit every day for your body. So, all right, so I just added the spices and I'm just gonna mix it up. Here's how it's looking. Sorry, it's a little shadowy in here, but looks pretty good. Smells pretty good. I'm just gonna let that cook down a little bit until it gets a little soft. So the next step is to add the broth. And again, that's two containers of chicken broth. So two of this size container. Um, and there's about four cups in each container. So two of these, two cups of water, and then one cup of the red quinoa. I'm really happy that we only added one tablespoon of oil because we totally didn't need a second one. You can see that the veggies are really nice and soft as they are. So that's great. So now it's the perfect time to add the broth, the quinoa, and the water. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump these in. This is when it starts to actually look like a soup. One, two, I'm going to add the quinoa next. Here's the one cup. Looks like a lot, but I measured it out. All just went in there. You know what sticks to the side, so there's still a little bit left, but it's fine. And then the water. Bam. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil. I'm gonna increase the heat. There we go. So I'm going to bring that up to a boil and then lower it and cover it. So I was just looking up the calories um, in between while I'm waiting for the water to boil. And if you make this recipe as being four servings, then it's only like 350 calories per serving, which I think is really good for like a, a hearty dinner time soup. Um, so I'm really happy and excited about that. I will say that it's taking me a little bit longer to make this than I had anticipated. I've been in the kitchen for maybe like an hour now. Um, so, you know, like sometimes I think the videos are so short because we want to be like efficient with the editing and everything. And then I want to make sure that it's also a realistic picture of how long it takes to make some of these recipes. So. Um, the actual recipe says that it's 15 minutes prep time and then 45 minutes cooking time. I Sometimes I think that that's if you're like a professional chef, which I'm not. <laughs> sometimes it takes me like double what the recipe says. Um, but anyways, I'm just waiting for this to boil. If it doesn't start boiling in another minute or two, then I'm just going to cover it because that will increase the... Or, It'll decrease the time that it takes to boil, so I'm tired of waiting for dinner. I'm starting to get hungry. I did decide to cover the pot because it was taking a long time to boil, um, but it is boiling, just to take a look in there. So I'm going to let it continue to boil for five minutes. All right, the soup's been boiling for five minutes, so I'm gonna uncover it, add the kale, 
and lower the heat a little bit and then simmer it for 10 to 15 minutes with just the kale in there. So we're gonna add the kale. I'm gonna try to do this while holding the camera. So here we have the kale. You can see I'm trying this out, this BAI lemonade. It's pretty good. But there's a lot of stuff in it, which I can't pronounce, which always makes me nervous, so. All right, and this kale smells like kale. Doesn't smell great. <laughs> really doesn't. But you're gonna put the whole package in there. I'm hoping that the the other like flavors, the sausage and everything will mask that kale smell. <laughs> it's fresh. I don't know why it smells so strong. Is that just how it is? I don't know. Clearly I don't eat kale on the regular. Like some people talk about kale chips and I tried it once and I was like, Ugh. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> I just can't. Maybe I'm just not there yet. Like it's too healthy for me. Oh my gosh, so much. But this is gonna cook down. So don't get scared. It's a big package, but it's gonna all cook down in the 15 minutes. Alright, let me give that a stir because it's all in there now. I switched to a ladle because now it's really looking like a soup. Let's just push that all in there. Alright, that's all mixed in. So I'm just going to let that simmer for another 10 or 15 minutes. I am going to lower the heat. Let's lower it right now. And put the cover back on. So I'll set the timer for. We'll, let, we'll give it 15. Alright, so that's been simmering. My timer just went off. It's been 15 minutes, so we're gonna see how we're looking and add the sausage back in. Alright, it's starting to smell good. It's starting to really smell like soup. So at this point, you can see the quinoa has cooked. You can tell because you can see those little white rings around it. So now it's starting to really look like a hearty soup. So I'm going to add the sausage back in. And let that all melt together. And I just want to show you, once this is all in there, how much grease came off from cooking it in oil. And I'm really happy that I decided to not just let it sit in the pan because even if it had just sat in the pan, um, the sausage would have still absorbed all that oil from the bottom of the pan. So. I feel like this was a lot better because now all this stuff that's on the paper plate or on the paper towel is not going to be in my body <laughs> when I eat this. So, and as you saw, like I ramped up the spices so that it's not going to lose any flavor at all. Let me just give this a stir so that it can all incorporate. It looks really good and basically now it just has to heat up and then you can serve it so it looks really good and it, I'm, there's so much here so I'm sure we're gonna have some left over for tomorrow too maybe I'll have this for lunch all right I'm just gonna let that sit for another few minutes but let me just show you so this was the top paper towel that I used to squeeze out all that extra oil and then this is the bottom one so I mean you can't really see very well because of the light it's you can see it more in person but that's a lot of oil to just be like sitting in the sausage so I'm happy about that but even though the recipe didn't call for it I still did that so all right so I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit and then just serve it and enjoy it
So the soup is done. Um, after I put the sausage in there, I just let it sit for a little while and then cool off. Um, so now I'm gonna just put it in a bowl and garnish. Time to test it out. This is how it's looking. Looks so good. It's still very hot, even though it's been sitting for a while. So let's see. Oh, that's delicious. Maybe should have cut the kale into smaller pieces because it's kind of they're long and dangly. <laughs> Let's see. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely like comfort food. I really like that this sausage is spicy. Cause it doesn't just taste like any soup it has a little bit of a kick to it so it's really good um definitely would make this again definitely would recommend it um i garnished it with lemon but you can also garnish with a little bit of parmesan so that's it um really good thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this and until next time i'll i hope that you have a great 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 week and um, that you yourself are taking some inspiration from this and making some really good, healthy, yummy recipes in your kitchen. So thanks so much, everybody.